Splatoon 3 is getting a big old content update in about two weeks. And the way that it's being handled bodes very well for the future of Splatoon 3. The chill season is bringing us three brand new weapons, 10 weapon reskins, at least one new map for Salmon Run, aka we're bringing back Marooner's Bay, and plenty more. Nintendo even knew the proper time to drop it. They waited at most 12 hours after the Splatfest was done to hit us while our brains were still in Splatoon mode. Very, very smart. Those new weapons we're getting, aka the Snipe Rider Charger, the Big Swig Roller, and the Splattershot Nova are all made with different niches in mind for weapon types that already exist. I'm very confident in Nintendo to be able to make weapons within niches that still work alongside the weapons that already exist. The good thing about Splatoon 3, and any Splatoon game really, is that every weapon has always had some kind of viability, even if some aren't as strong as others. Let's take the Snipe Rider for example. We don't know exactly how it plays yet, but we know it can hold the 5 charges, and we know that it can't do a 1 hit KO shot. That could mean that maybe it'll have, let's say, less range than a bamboozler, but be able to fire very consistently? That would make it pretty balanced. From what we've seen of the reskins, Nintendo seems to be working to make sure that these reskins of weapons are clearly different from the weapons that already exist in the game. We've seen especially from the Luna Blaster, which has a nice black matte finish, and the mini splatling that's white and blue, very different from the current one, look different enough that you'll know what those weapons are from the moment that the matches start. This also happened with the Kensa set, as well as the Sheldon Picks in Splatoon 1, slash Splatoon 2 because it's kind of important to know what weapons are there when the game starts instead of having to try to guess as the game goes on. There have been weapons in the past where this hasn't been the case, like the nozzle noses for example, where they all were blue but some of them had a sticker slapped on. I'm excluding of course the Kensa L3 nozzle nose and the Cherry uh, H3 here, but you know what I mean. If in the future we continue to get 10 to 15 weapons every single patch, things will be looking very good for Splatoon 3. Remember that in Splatoon 2, we usually got like a weapon or two, like every week, and by just dumping them all in one big old update, we can see a possible larger change to the overall Splatoon 3 metagame instead of seeing things ever so slowly change week by week by week. And I guess we'll find out soon if people enjoy that more than having something added every single week. We're also aware of the brand new catalog that's going to come out with this update, which will of course cause people to return to the game to try out all the brand new weapons. Something about the trickling in update style of adding things in one week at a time is sometimes people don't feel like it's enough to be like, oh yeah. I, I want to come back this week. There are other people that of course love that style where it's like, oh, I have something new I could try every single week. But now with this catalog, what's going to happen is people are going to come back. They're going to see not only all these new weapons, but they're also going to see all the new stuff they can get from grinding out the game again. And that could re-inspire people to stick around with Splatoon 3 a while longer. Another thing about Splatoon 3's weapons is that you also get a cool locker sticker when you get to level 3 for a weapon, as well as the badges for higher levels on your weapons. And some people, ooh, some people want to collect as many of those as possible. You know, I'm one of those people. So a big old drop of weapons just means more things for me to do in the game. The timing of this season is going to be about a week and a half after Pokemon Scarlet and Violet comes out. For those that want to take a break from Splatoon, they'll have the opportunity to do so before throwing themselves back into the catalog gauntlet. Uh, I'll be grinding both games shamelessly. Yeah! They also didn't ruin Flounder Heights! Is the map perfect? No. We've already seen they've lowered the overall height of the map to make the climb not as long. But I didn't really mind how high the map was. It was funny, dropping from up high with a Kraken or a Dynamo Roller. But now we can just do that with Reef Slider. Wee. If we keep getting updates like this, which clearly show that Nintendo wants to change the game around, I really do think we have a wonderful at least two years to go for Splatoon 3. I hope you feel the same. And I hope that in the future, you're also able to keep enjoying Splatoon 3 with us. Have a good one.